Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ming Tiu Shang. I'm a senior principal engineer at Intel. Uh, today, we're going to talk about machine learning with WebAssembly together with my colleague, Andrew Brown. So here's our agenda. We'll start with introduction to Wadi and the Bico Alliance. Then we'll get into some of the design guidelines for Wadi and uh, such as you know loader versus uh, builder, and the machine learning model as the virtual IO type. Uh, Andrew then will start talk about how to write a WordNN application in Rust and assembly script and the reference implementation architecture on WordNN time. And then he will then do a uh, image classification demo with WordNN and then followed by performance advantage analysis of WordNN. Then we end the presentation with call for action. So what is WASI? WASI stands for WebAssembly System Interface. It is a modular system interface for WebAssembly and uh, with focus on security and portability. Uh, so the body that's driving this specification is a subgroup of the W3C WebAssembly CG and uh, WASINN is a WASI module for neural network. And currently we're in phase two with the WASI community group. So let's talk briefly about the Bico Alliance, which is an open source community dedicated to creating secure new software foundation, you know, built on top of a technology such as the WebAssembly, WebAssembly system interface, interface type, uh, module linking, etc. And the worthy implementation is definitely an important goal of Bico Alliance. And uh, the first reference implementation for WordNN is built on top of WordNN Time, which is a Bico Alliance project. So let's dig deeper into you know, why we want to do WordNN. So the first question we want to ask is that uh, you know, why do we need the WebAssembly for machine learning? And it turned out that the, uh, people do a lot of machine learning training and then they typically deploy them to uh, a variety of devices with different architecture and operating systems. And that's where the WebAssembly come into the picture because it provides the ideal uh, portable for format for deployment of those models to those devices. So the next question is that, you know, why do you need the WebAssembly system interface, right? Uh, the reason is very simple, uh, because typically uh, machine learning workload require a lot of performance and the special hardware support acceleration are necessary. Uh, you know, examples are like AVX512 for CPU and uh, access to GPU, TPU, etc. And the current WebAssembly spec only supports a limit uh, set of a parallelism, you know, especially with this 128-bit uh, SIMD. Uh, so that's clearly not sufficient for uh, near-native performance for those machine learning workload on uh, modern hardware. Uh, so later in the presentation, we'll actually demonstrate 7 to 32x performance improvement. Uh, with this WASINN approach that we are proposing over a pure WebAssembly approach. Let's take a look at the WebAssembly runtime environment and the use cases associated with each of those environments. So there are three different type of uh, environments for WebAssembly to uh, execute. So the first one is the standalone environment where you know, a WebAssembly application run on top of a standalone WebAssembly virtual machine, which call into the WASI software stack for uh, system APIs. Uh, so uh, typically, you know, standalone application or cloud applications such as a con content delivery network, functional service, envoy proxy uh, type of cloud middleware, and uh, resource constraint environments such as the IoT or embedded environment. Uh, you know, those are the typical applications that will uh, 
make use of a standalone uh, WebAssembly virtual machine. Uh, so the second one is, you know, uh, the current the mainstream uh, browser environment where that you have access to a JavaScript virtual machine where that the, a WebAssembly virtual machine is a component of it and have access to web API through JavaScript environment. Uh, that's where the web and then, uh, you know, API lives and uh, uh, all the browser application or PWA will make use of this environment. So the third category is the Node.js environment, which is a reuse of the VA uh, JavaScript engine uh, in a standalone environment. And it would uh, make use of a web API as well as a WASI API. So this is a case that uh, uh, when you don't have a lot of a resource constraint, and uh, you, when, especially when you need to have both JavaScript and the was and WebAssembly support, and this will be an ideal situation for those type of applications. So let's take a look at uh, some of the design decisions we have made for WASI and uh, In this case, you know, loader versus builder API. Uh, so when we started the designing uh, what was the end, end you know, those are the two uh, options that we could take. And then we work really closely with uh, the web and end team uh, and, the, you know, they went through similar exercise. Uh, so in the end, we decided to take the model loader API first and uh, uh, push out the builder API to a second phase. Uh, so the reason for that uh, multiple flow uh, and, uh, you know, influencing is obviously the main machine learning use case. And that's our initial focus. So a loader API is really uh, an easy way to support inferencing. In terms of feature completeness, uh, you know, machine learning is still evolving rapidly with uh, roughly 20% growth of new operation each year. Uh, so a, a builder API will probably take multiple years uh, to be uh, you know, usable and uh, uh, roughly functional, complete to cover all the major operations uh, versus a loader API, which we will treat a model as an opaque object and uh, uh, we can just define operation uh, related to the uh, machine learning loader and uh, get done with it. So that's a lot easier pass to, to market. Uh, and a loader API is a much simpler API with uh, a better IP protection opportunity. And the next slide, we actually talk about how we treat the machine uh, learning uh, you know, model format so that uh, we can make the machine, the, the, the main uh, web assembly program you know, framework and the model format agnostic. And uh, it's also very easy to support a variety of devices. Uh, you know, CPU, GPU, FPGA, TPU for the loader API. So uh, for uh, the model builder API, you know, the main advantage of it is that you can provide like operation specific acceleration. Uh, you know, this is very useful for some machine learning framework that lacks support, you know, by some model converters or by some Backend machine learning engine, and in that case, you know, if you want to compile that specialized machine learning framework completely into WebAssembly and have some specific operation accelerated by the hardware, then the builder API would be very useful. And we think we can look into supporting that sort of usage in the phase, second phase of Wadi and that, and we could potentially leverage. Uh, you know, work already done by the web and end team. Uh, let's talk about machine learning uh, model as a virtualized IO type. Our view of a machine learning model is a virtualized IO type, uh, which is you know, you think of a general worthy direction. Uh, this type is just like a media type uh, with its own data and the metadata and the defined operation associated with it, such as the load. So uh, the approach we take is to, you know, to push the mapping to actual implementation to the edges. Uh, that way we can keep the main 
WebAssembly program portable and the framework agnostic. Uh, so there are really two approaches to to this idea. Uh, one is that uh, we can perform a model conversion uh, before we do anything else uh, uh, to whatever accept the format for this target platform. Or alternatively, we can let the WebAssembly virtual machine to dispatch to different machine learning backend, uh, you know, based on metadata available associated with this uh, machine learning model. Uh, so uh, it could be, you know, OpenVINO, TensorFlow, or Onyx in this example. Uh, so that's the approach to uh, the model, uh, a machine learning model. And the next, uh, Andrew will cover how to write what in an application. Hi, my name is Andrew Brown. I'm a software engineer at Intel. Let me tell you a little bit more about the WASINN API. What you see here is the WIDEX specification of that API. It's a five function API, uh, including things such as load, uh, initializing and execution context, setting inputs, retrieving outputs, and most importantly, computing the inference using the loaded graph. Here's an example of those bindings in assembly script. What we're trying to do here is make it a lot easier for users to use WASINN from their WebAssembly applications. Here are the same bindings, but in Rust. You can see that the same functions are exposed, but you have higher level constructs, which should make it a lot easier to use. Though WASINN is not tied to any specific WebAssembly engine or machine learning framework, uh, we did have to start somewhere. Uh, and so we used WASM time as that engine and OpenVINO as the machine learning framework. Uh, this diagram shows you all the various components um, in our implementation. Starting on the left, you'll see the user application code, uh, which when tied together with the WASM and bindings can get compiled down to a WebAssembly file. Uh, that WebAssembly file will make use of uh, tensor inputs as, for example, from an image and the model file or files um, and we'll pass those on to the engine, in our case, WASM time. Uh, WASM time provides the WASM uh, implementation, but when it comes to ma the machine learning heavy lifting, it proxies calls down to OpenVINO, which will execute them on a CPU or GPU, etc. Uh, these middle boxes can be swapped out. The engine and the machine learning framework could be swapped out uh, for different implementations. Let me switch over to my ID for this demo. Okay, let's look at an example of classifying this image of a pizza inside WASM time with WASNN enabled uh, from assembly script. So the first thing we're going to need is a version of WASM time with WASNN enabled. That'll look something like the following. What I'm doing here is I'm compiling WASM time with the WASM feature and using some pre-installed OpenVINO libraries as the backing implementation. Uh, next, what I'll do is I will place WASM time on my path for convenience, and I will tell uh, my path to load up the paths for the OpenVINO libraries. Let's go back to our example. So I've written this assembly script code, and you can see here that it's using the high-level API, the, the bindings that we provide in this uh, library. It'll load the graph, uh, both the graph description and the graph weights, uh, attempt to use the OpenVINO implementation on a CPU, uh, initialize the execution context, load up the tensor, compute the classification, and then with the output tensor, it'll sort those results and print out the top five. So to compile this assembly script example into WebAssembly, we're going to need some tools which are provided in this repository, and we will run ASBuild. 
This is this uses the AssemblyScript compiler to compile the example I just showed you into WebAssembly. Let's take a look at uh, what it generated here. So if we look at the imports for the optimize.wat file, uh, you can see that it's using WASINN as well as some other WASI APIs for, for example, for reading files. Other things that show up in the uh, build directory uh, are an untouched version of that WASM file and, and both WASM and WAT versions of these uh, of, of these compiled artifacts. I've placed in here the uh, AlexNet uh, weights and model files, as well as the image and the image converted to a raw tensor. And we'll use those in our example um, to uh, as inputs to the classification. Okay, let's run the classification. So what it's doing here is loading the graph uh, files. This uh, helper function, read bytes, is probably not as efficient as it could be. I believe it's reading each byte, uh, byte by byte. Um, and then we'll see it set up the execution con context and actually run the classification. Okay, so now we see that it's printed out the top five results for the uh, raw tensor that we passed in of a pizza. Um, but what do these mean? Let's take a look at uh, this classes file that I also placed in our build directory. And we'll grep for 963. We see, okay, 963 corresponds to a pizza. So it is identifying a pizza uh, from the image I showed you earlier. So this would be an example of using the assembly script uh, bindings to run WASINN programs from within WASINN. After proving to ourselves that we could make this work, we wanted to see what are the performance benefits. Uh, the intuition was that uh, WebAssembly couldn't make full use of, of the system capabilities, uh, whether that was longer SIMD or, or, or threading or special machine learning uh, uh, instructions. Uh, and so to do that, we took as a starting point some work that Murat Dukan had done uh, to run uh, TensorFlow models from within the browser. Uh, we called that approach the WASM exclusive approach and we adapted it to work within a standalone engine, Node.js. Uh, on the right side, you'll see the WASINN approach, which uses a different engine, WASM time, and a different machine learning framework, OpenVINO. Uh, but what we're trying to do is compare approaches here, uh, not necessarily engines or machine learning frameworks. We are trying to use the same machine learning model and the same uh, input, um, which will then pass down to the machine learning framework. So we ran some classifications using both approaches. What you see here is a chart of us running a mobile net classification a thousand times and measuring the average inference time on both a WASM exclusive uh, setup and a WASINN setup. You can see that even across uh, various platforms, the WASINN approach is significantly faster. We thought, oh, this is probably because, you know, threads are available in WASINN and are not available in, uh, you know, the Node.js TensorFlow uh, setup. So we single threaded the, you know, WASN and OpenVINO um, implementation, but still see a significant speed up. We think this is because of longer width SIMD um, and optimizations that OpenVINO can provide. Uh, just to make sure that our uh, approach made sense, we tested a more complex model. So using the inception model, uh, we again ran a classification a thousand times and took the average inference times. And you can see that uh, still the WASINN approach uh, is significantly faster, even when single threading uh, the, the implementation. So we took as a summary that uh, there's per performance being left on the table and that uh, the WASINN approach 
to using the full system capabilities is necessary to get um, the best possible performance. You can see speed ups of up to 32x uh, from the WASINN approach. Um, and we hope that this motivates uh, uh, you know, adding, adding new engine implementations of WASINN and adding new uh, uh, machine learning framework implementations uh, to those engines. Finally, call for action. If you are a machine learning practitioner, uh, please uh, go download Watson Time and uh, start using Watson. Uh, tell us what you like, what you don't like, what kind of improvement you would like to see. If you are interested in the Watson proposal uh, in terms of spec or architecture, uh, please engage us in the Watson community and to help us drive this proposal to final uh, approval. Uh, it's a lot easier to make changes right now than later, as this proposal is in phase two right now. If you are a WebAssembly virtual machine implementer, then you have this opportunity of providing a additional reference implementation for WASDNN, you know, on your own uh, virtual machine, and perhaps with different uh, backends, such as TensorFlow or Onyx or anything else. So that concludes our presentation today. Thank you.